Since this is one of the best Scottish rugby teams we've ever seen, and since they embrace the favourites tag now, this is just a procession, isn't it, this fixture? They're just going to roll into Rome, get the five points, then head to Dublin for a championship showdown on the final weekend. Right? Right? Or maybe Scotland fans know only too well just how dangerous a fixture this has been for them over the years and they'll actually be a little bit nervous. 2015, Italy's last win in the Six Nations was against Scotland. Uh, they also won in Rome... Uh, what was it three years before that in 2012? They won two years before that in 2010. They won two years before that in 2008. All right, it hasn't been rich pickings recently, but out of 15 matches in Rome, Italy have won six. The best record they've got against any other Six Nations team and they will fancy their chances against Scotland in a one-off fixture. And Scottish fans, I would imagine, have been scarred enough by the past to just have a little bit of doubt in their mind, despite the really good team they've got. I'll get to the Scottish team in a minute, but let's look at Italy, who have a little bit of steel back in the ranks. They will feel more confident for the for seeing Seb Negri's name on that team sheet, back in the number six jersey, a defensive totem for them, a ball carrier. And in, in terms of ball carrying, when Scotland think, OK, we've dealt with Seb Negri and the guys that are in the starting lineup. They look to the bench and Lorenzo Canoni is also back from injury to take his place in the 23. That is another massive boost. Simone Ferrari uh, at tight head prop, another player who returns. And that is a more formidable looking Italian pack, isn't it? They can do some damage. Uh, but maybe the most eye-catching selection of them all is behind the pack. And it's on the right wing where Louis Liner makes his debut for his new adopted country. Well, it's his motherland, isn't it? His mum's Italian. I did wonder whether he might, if he had to choose uh, another nation, he's clearly thought the England thing's not going to happen for him and he's got options, so why not explore them? I did wonder whether he might go for Australia. His dad was a, was a legend uh, for Australia and his brother Tom is doing all right um, down under. He's on, the, um, he's on the Wallaby radar as well as fly half. But, hey, I'm delighted for Louis Liner. He makes his start and uh, welcome to international rugby. Can you uh, just... Deal with Duan van der Merwe. There you go. There's a good lad. So, uh, yeah, a baptism of fire. But in Rome, that, what a great moment for him and his family as well. So that, that's fantastic to see. And I really hope he goes well. Uh, I am hope he's got the anthem down and will absolutely belt it out. That's, um, yeah, that, that's, that's a great moment, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, in terms of Italy's team elsewhere, you, you look in that back line. And because Louis Liner is there, Tommaso Menoncello can be moved off the wing. Back into the centre, him and Juan Ignacio Brex have got a great combination there. As an English fan, I'm, I'm quite an England fan. I'm quite jealous of those two centres, to be perfectly honest. And Menoncello, he is the a uh, boy. And that again, that word steel. You get Negri, you get Canoni back. You've got those two centres. There's there's a spine of that team that's got a little bit of bite to it. And yeah, they ca they can do some damage. And they've got Louis Liner, Monte Ioanni. And they're the little rugby pixie and Capowat, so they have got some ballers. One of the problem shirts for Italy is the nine jersey. They need a great scrum half. They don't really have one. Paige Rello swaps with Stephen Varney again. Uh, they trade places on the bench and in the start. But yeah, Italy will be optimistic, but they are up against, as I described them, one of the best Scottish teams ever. And look at the names. And in the pack, the side largely picks itself. Um, there are three changes to the 15, actually. One enforced by injury one where Gregor Townsend's taken the deci decision to have a player rest and the third one a tactical selection so going through those in order Sione Tua Pelotu injured breaking up the Huey Pelotu centre partnership which has worked so well but whilst those two guys club and country have been absolutely fantastic Cam Redpath has got that club country bond with Finn Russell these days and he looked great when he came on against England made that break to set up what was it Duan van der Merwe that third try for the crossfield kick that all sparked from cam redpath taking a little break and um spotting a hole and going for it so he's looked really good it's his first start actually for scotland since his debut 2021 which is um six nations start i should say since 2021 which is but he's had, he's had a lot of injuries since then to be fair so um but yeah they can have confidence in him the player that's been rested is ben white at scrum half with george horn getting the start now i i'm a massive fan of george horn and i've said on this channel many times I don't understand sometimes why he doesn't get more opportunities to start. He's got one now, and that's partly, you feel, because Ben White's had to go away, play for Toulon, and now he's back. That said, Blair Kinghorn 
also went and played in the top 14 last weekend. He was playing for Toulouse and he's back in the side and that probably just tells you a little bit. There's a context there, isn't there? Scotland can afford to change Ben White and give him a rest. They don't really have anyone that can replace what Blair Kinghorn can do and Scotland need him. So, And in terms of Blair Kinghorn, actually, while I'm on him, I'm really glad. This is something I talked about a couple of weeks ago. I'm glad that Scotland have gone for the 6-2 split. You can't actually see his name, but Kyle Rowe and Ali Price are the two backs on the bench. Um, I'm really pleased about that. It didn't make a lot of sense to me having Ben Healy on the bench. Yes, he may well be a better um, out-and-out fly half than Blair Kinghorn, but being as you're not really going to use Ben Healy unless Finn Russell gets injured, you're not going to use him for tactical reasons, why not just have Blair Kinghorn as your backup 10? and have an extra forward on the bench, a little bit more energy and impetus. I just, to me, it seems to be a no-brainer. Um, so that's that's how Gregor Townsend has gone on this one. The other selection then, and this is a tactical selection, Andy Christie gets a long-awaited and, and, and very well-deserved start for Scotland. And he's been looking really good when he's come on, hasn't he? It feels like he deserves that. At the same time, Jamie Ritchie, strange old championship for him, started out the 23, started again, now on the bench, and had Gregor Townsend not gone with a 6-2 split, you feel like Jamie Ritchie would have been out of the starting line, uh, out of the 23 again. He didn't seem to do a great deal wrong in the last game for me, but I think it's a positive selection of Andy Christie rather than a negative one for Jamie Ritchie. That's how I'm reading it anyway. In terms of a combined 15, if you could take all 23 players from both squads and pit players against each other, the, both the number one jerseys against each other, both the number two jerseys and so on. What team would you come up with? Well, this is what mine looks like. And it paints a, well, not a great picture from an Italian point of view, does it? I mean, they're heavily outnumbered by Scots in this 23-man squad, but they have got an opportunity. Look at the pack. Rutza, Negri, Lamaro and Canoni on the bench. And they've got some, they've got big players. Those are... Italy's best four forwards and if they can have performances play out of their skin and Scotland play just a bit below par then they could put the Italian team in the right position in terms of the back line they have got great players yet yeah, Paolo Garbisi is really good but he's not Finn Russell and um, yeah Monte Ioani and Louis Liner are really good but I, I don't think they're as good as the, the, their Scotland counterparts same as Ange Capuozzo and Blair Kinghorn Tommaso Menoncello, he is someone that can give them the, the direction. And when you look at the Italian players that are there on that, on that selection right there, they all have ball-carrying ability. That is going to be massive for the Azzurri. Those are my thoughts on this game. Uh, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? Can't wait for this matchup. I mean, I think Scotland will be too hot for Italy, but Italy have always got a shot. <laughs> Particularly, they'll believe that they can roll back the years and... Um, take on the spirit of the 15 team, the, the 2012 team, the 2010 team, the 2008 team, the 2006 team, and try and somehow stop the rot. Scotland have won for the last nine years. Um, can Italy change that? We'll see at the weekend. I don't think so, but there's always a shot. That'd be boring. We wouldn't bother watching if there wasn't a chance. So um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled on the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave, leave your comments down below and uh, hit subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.